could have been probably my biggest mistake was telling Jimmy Hart that I called Barnett. Because Jimmy mentioned it to someone? I, actually, I called Barnett in Calgary or Vancouver, one of the two. I think maybe I think I called Barnett like the second day or the third day. And I mentioned to Jimmy Hart, I said, I called Jim Barnett. I said, uh, they, they'll have a spot for me. I'm going, I'll, I'll just go there. I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Give, give Vince a chance. Please, please don't just walk out. Well, obviously, I understand why Jimmy was saying that. Maybe it was for personal reasons. Maybe professional reasons. If I walked out and left, I mean, I was a pretty good cash cow for Jimmy. I'm wearing sold out main event shows, and and uh, Jimmy gets paid according to the houses, like mm -hmm. I did. And uh, he was at that point in time, he was really just only managing me, pretty much all the time. He had a couple other guys, but no. I mean, he was like stuck with me. And so uh, uh, I think I did call out of Calgary, and then we went to Winnipeg the next day. And he, he had talked me into, please, 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 don't do it. Uh, give Vince a chance. Talk to Vince first. He'll understand. Understand? The fucking guy didn't even look at me for 20 minutes in the office that day. But uh, he, uh, I got to Winnipeg, and it was just really eating at me bad. And uh, Jack Lanza was the agent. And I called his room. We stayed at the same hotel. Jack, what do you know about this Saturday night main event coming up? Oh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I know I have to work it. You know, he didn't. He didn't know. He didn't. He know didn't know. They don't tell the agents he what's didn't. coming down the pike. No, he didn't. All he right. didn't know. He says, I don't know. All I know is I have to work it because I didn't give him any indication. I said, what, What's what's what do you know about this Saturday night main event coming up? <clears throat> and he said, oh, I don't know. I'm just. I, I know I have to work. I have to be there. I have to work it. Like he really didn't want to because, I mean, he didn't want to work it either. A lot of guys didn't want to. It was a long-ass show. Yeah. It was part of the TV tapings. It went to fucking midnight or one in the morning. And uh, so he said, and I said, uh, well, I need to talk to Vince about it. And he says, uh, okay, is there anything I need to tell him? I said, yeah, you can tell him I'm not doing that fucking job. <laughs> Exact words. He said, well, uh, I'll be talking to him in about five minutes. How quickly does the phone ring in your hotel? About five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Howard Finkel. Oh, okay. And he said, you know, hello, how you doing? Uh, I understand that you'd like to talk to Vince about the... Uh, what what we're doing on the Saturday night main event and I proceeded to tell Howard which I knew now that now looking back I know they had me on speaker okay it wasn't like Vince is getting ambushed he's he's hearing it right now coming out of my mouth going into Howard's ear into the speaker and it's broadcast over the network so <laughs> and then Vince gets on the phone and I was just Unpolitely told him go fuck himself. I wasn't doing it. What does he say? He didn't like it. But are you making a case that Vince? Are you looking at the houses? I did Why that. would yeah. you do? Yeah, this? I said that. Look said what that. we built. I said that after you know, as I was telling him that you know, this is not going to happen. And then I made the second mistake. I said, I've already talked to Jim Barnett. Oh, fuck, he went nuts. What is it? Are you fucking kidding me? Why'd you talking to him? What did you have to talk to Jim Barnett about? I said, well, obviously, I ain't got anything to talk to you about. <laughs> you know? I Sat said, at your table for two yeah, hours. Yeah, I said, we're doing sell-out fucking business, Vince. And, you know, I just, I got a new house and a new baby at home. And I said, brother, this thing is, you know, rebuilding of me ain't going to happen. Well, that's about the dumbest fucking he was the dumbest fucking thing you could ever do. I said, I don't think it was at all. He said, So you're not gonna do the show then? I said, No, I'm not doing the fucking show. I said, in fact, if you want the goddamn belt, 
I'm taking it to Memphis with me, and if you want it, it'll be over to my mantle on my fireplace, and if you think you can beat me, put your fucking tights on, come down to Memphis and try to beat me. I said, it's your belt. You can have it back. I said, I'll lose that belt to two people. Hogan, because he helped bring me in there, and you, because it's your belt, if you think you can beat me. And that was it. Jim Helwig wasn't on that list at the time? No. No, and then, <laughs> and then that was pretty much uh, that was pretty much it, and and until uh, uh, until uh, that night, in Winnipeg was real like walking on eggshells, and I called Randy over, and and I I told him I I call I got Randy over, pulled him to the side, and him and Liz, and and told him the whole story, and why, and he understood. Because he had been a promoter and he had been a booker right. and he had owned a territory with his dad and mm -hmm. he had gone through these things and he understood and it was nothing I, and he, he understood it was nothing against him and a lot of people want to make it that I didn't want to do this job for Randy's it was not that was so far from the truth I think Lanny might have even been in the and I let them all come in come here guys I want to talk to you a minute and and I I let them know the whole story of what was going on and why and my reason behind it. Mm -hmm. And they understood it. And they, they know that if it happened to them, they would have done the same thing. Right. I mean, we were, we were at a point in our careers where we had no contract. Yeah. I mean, my contract was up with WWE. It was a 10-day contract. The first, day, first 10 days I worked, the contract was in value. Right. It, was, it was done. It, it, it had performed itself. So that's what we did. And then they we ended up... Uh, Vince says, he, he says, there's a million finishes. I said, well, if there's a million fucking finishes, why do you want to do that one? I just felt like it. He didn't. He did not give me that courtesy, that handshake deal that we. I thought we solidified when I went to work for him, when I shook hands with him, and he hired me. Had he sat you down at the table alone, maybe without now? When we Randy. shook hands and he hired me, yeah. I said, "I'll do everything I can for you." Just keep me good on television. And he knew what that meant. Do not beat me on TV. Understood. And I don't know how he could have explained it to me. To make it work. For to you. make it work, especially when we didn't have any kind of contract other than a handshake. And now your handshake don't mean anything. I just felt, I felt the, the vibes from the people in the office and from Vince himself that I couldn't be trusted anymore. And uh, it was downhill after that.